All right, we are live and it is time for the burning platform. This is where Pumi and I get to talk to, at the moment, the leaders of all the various political parties. Today, we talk to the party, are they sixth or seventh biggest party? I can't remember, but they got four members of parliament, right? Yeah. The ACDP, African Christian Democratic Party, and we are joined by the leader of that party, the Reverend Kenneth Meshwer. Good morning. How are you, sir? <laughs> Good morning, Gareth and Pumi, <clears throat> and all your listeners. Thank you very much for having me on your show. It's always nice to see you, Kenneth Meshwe. And you are uh, looking, you're looking fighting fit. I believe you were in Parliament yesterday, uh, making speeches. Yeah, no, I was asking questions. We Good. are concerned about dirty water we are getting, and some provinces and municipalities have no water altogether. So I wanted mm -hmm. to know what the plan is to ensure that we do not run out of water as South Africans. I think that's an excellent place to start because, you know, so many of our politicians are busy with the, the attention-seeking headlines and the, um, the, 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 the outrageous activities of kind of getting people to talk about them. So they'll say whatever they need to say to get in the news. Um, and, and, Things like water are really the things that most people in this country are concerned about. They're not really worried about which politician is grandstanding over an issue. This is why I like uh, the fact that you were busy asking questions about water yesterday. How did it go? Well, it went well. I was assured that we now have um, an increasing number of uh, water experts who will ensure that we get clean drinking water. And uh, so we'll see whether they will fulfill what they are saying, because um, we know that they've chased experts in energy. We are having mm -hmm. these problems with uh, ESCOM today because some of the people that were well qualified to an extent that they ensured that South Africa wins the best award when it came to the best uh, power utility in the world in mm -hmm. 2000 and uh, i mean yeah. it was amazing to see south africa beat bigger countries uh, countries that have a bigger economy because we had experts who were in charge of escom and as a result we were given the award of uh, the best power producing utility in the country and so i'm hoping that even with these experts with water that will stop buying bottled water because mm -hmm. our water was once rated as the best. We did not need bottled water, and we are hoping that one day we'll be there again. Well, that would be a great thing, and from your mouth to God's ears and to the politicians' ears, um, and mentioning God is an important part of what your party stands for. So I think let's just start there. The African Christian Democratic Party, you guys started in 1993, and you've been a member of parliament since 1994. You've been re-elected, what, five times already? So this is a long track record. People can now judge you uh, with a with a with a very long track record. Uh, you you believe in certain things that the other parties try not to talk about too much. You believe in moral leadership. Um, you know, a lot of politicians when they hear the word moral, they run for the hills. Uh, you have a different relationship with that word. Is it fair to say that? Well, it, it is fair because integrity cannot exist without morality. There are mm. people who, who say we are leaders of integrity. They use the word integrity very loosely. But the mm. fact is that integrity has within its definition an element of morality. So it is a good thing, I think, to remind our people that what we are seeing in our communities, the rapes, the murders, the violence on all this, is just showing a lack of morality in the country. People don't seem to know what is right and what is wrong. People don't seem to care about the feelings of their neighbors, the feelings of people around them, which I don't think should be allowed to, to be entrenched in society. I, I really loved what you were talking about uh, when I was in the backstage, in the mm -hmm. back room. Um, you said something I really liked. I mean, we don't want to be around people who are angry all the time. It's a good yeah. thing to be around people who are happy. And uh, yes. If you allow me, I'll say one or two things about that, but I really enjoyed it. Sure. Thank you. Sure. Absolutely. No, tell us about that. Tell us why you think that's important. Well, besides telling you what is important, let me tell you what I personally do at the airport. And, and many of the um, ladies and gentlemen behind, behind the counters, they know me already. 
I prefer to be early at the airport and not to be late. So when I'm early enough and there are not too many people behind me in the queue, I stand and look at the counters. Sometimes you'll find there will be five or six people behind the counters and they look at me. Okay. Mm. And then I stand and said, I'm waiting to see who has the best mile. <laughs> Okay, I said, because I don't want to be served by a person who's moody, who's angry, who's brought their problems to the airport. So because you are going to make my day a good one or a bad one. So I want a happy person to serve me. And then you see them smiling. That's just me. Yeah. I just enjoy being around people who are happy because happiness is contagious, just as anger is contagious. Anger is contagious. Totally But agree with you. You know, Dr. Meshwa, I I've often asked myself, South Africa has a almost 80% of the population of South Africa describe themselves, according to the census, as Christians. And and yet you are a one percent party with four seats in parliament. Why do you think it is that um, more Christians are not voting for you? What is it that the party is not conveying that uh, gets more Christians to be behind you? There are two basic reasons why we have not done as well as we did. The first one is theology in the church, wrong theology. We were taught, I grew up being taught in church, that Christians should not be involved in politics. And this, unfortunately, has been our biggest challenge to try and change the mindset of people that Christians should be a member citizens who are hands-on, citizens who are concerned about what's happening in their communities, citizens who want to assist in every level of society. Now, when we talk about assisting or being part of every level of society, churches, unfortunately, many of them, they've been excluding politics. Help people, but not politics, because politics is a dirty game. Politics is going to pollute you. Politics is going to destroy your good morals. And by being this long in politics, we have proved to our people that that is not true. You can still maintain your integrity, be whoever you are, be as happy, be as joyful, and be a person of character, strong moral character, and still be human and be in politics. So that we have proved it. This has been the first thing. But secondly, we have had a problem of loyalty. Africans are loyal. Africans are loyal. I read a few years ago, um, a, a, a something that brought much more light on why we have not done as well as we should earlier, all right? People in Africa, we are told, political analysts are saying, Africans are loyalists. When they talk about a liberation organization and they talk about an individual being their liberator, they will be so loyal to that liberator. Even when that liberator messes up, they will be so loyal and they will always say, let's give him a chance, let's give him a chance, let's hope, let's give him a chance, let's give him a chance. And these political analysts are saying, it takes an average of 30 years to mm. replace a liberation organization. When people are, are fascinated by a leader, a liberator, they become so loyal that even when they do wrong, they endure hoping that this liberator is definitely going to turn around. But after 30 years, then they realize, no, man, no, 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 no. Things must change. And when you look at what's happening in South Africa today, you see people and you hear people talking about change. People who are always saying, my blood is black, green, and yellow. Now they're no more talking about that kind of blood, okay? They're not talking about changes. We need to try somebody else. The splits in political parties, particularly in the majority party, is a clear, clear, clear example and proof of what we are saying now. Now you have people who you'd never, ever guess would oppose the ruling party. Now they are starting their own thing. They are not happy anymore. And we are around the 30 years that we have been told changes to come. So We are exactly the 30 years. So yeah. what 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 do you think, what what then, now that we are at this 30-year mark, what then do you think your chances are going into this election? 
chances are very good. That is why I'm so happy, Gareth, for inviting me to your show. And you'll say we spoke about it before it happened. So it is not just a mystery that dropped out of heaven. People are angry. People are upset. It is the 30 year, uh, 30 years that the ruling party has been in power. And the encouraging thing and the nice thing is many of the people who are living disgruntled from the, the liberation organization are saying, let's not try something we have not tried before. Who, is pe who are the people we can trust? People who have been consistent, people who have not been lying to us, people who have not promised us Mercedes, Benz and cars and fridges and microwaves and did not deliver. And obviously, if you listen to what we've been saying over the years, we have never made impossible promises that we know we cannot keep. So a promise the ACDP makes is a promise we will keep. So we are benefiting in this 30th uh, anniversary of the ruling party, or of the governing party. We are now benefiting from those people who are disgruntled. And many Christians are saying it is now to listen to what the ACDP has been saying and supporting the ACDP. That is why I strongly believe that the results are going to be amazing for the ACDP. What is the ACDP promising? If, if people have not been listening or not hearing, what is it that the ACDP is? What are your top three priorities? What are you promising? Well, the first priority is eradicating crime, even before corruption, crime. Why? When you talk about investors, investors want to ensure that their lives are safe, their products and properties and assets and other, all other things are safe. We have had in the past investors coming to South Africa and they were marked. And some of them, we are told, left immediately. They say, if I am marked, and I've come to invest, what guarantee will I have that my family will be safe and I will be safe? So the issue of crime, we cannot live in a country where crime has become part of us. When I'm in my house, when I'm gone and my family, my wife and children are at home, I need to be at peace. Nobody will violate them. When our children go to school, they go to universities, you need to be at peace. I mean, to hear that a, a sixth grade a young boy went with, to school with a gun and shot the headmaster, wanted to, to kill the deputy also and the class, class mm. teacher. All right. It's these are that. things that are happening. And it is not normal. So we, number one, have to deal with crime. And that is the priority of the ACDP. Number one, crime. And number two, we have to in, in, uh, attract investors in the country. We want to fight uh, unemployment. And as I said, when you are show investors that their lives and assets will be safe, number one, and number two, you assure them that the climate for investments and doing business will be good. We will create a climate conducive for business, good business and investments. So you give them that assurance. And then you have policy that will ensure them that government is not going to change their mind that today they say you pay this percentage, now tomorrow they increase it. Okay? Policy, there will be policy assurance. Policy that is not going to be changed the way one feels when he wakes up in the morning. All right? So uh, number one is age of crime. Number two, um, Number two is creating the, the climate in conducive for job creation and for investment. Mm -hmm. And obviously, number three is to ensure that um, we give our children good education. We give our children the, one of the best educations in the world. Okay. So, all right. Uh, can, can I ask about education for our children? Because there's a lot of controversy at the moment around this Bella Bill, um, which is all about how the government is insisting on changing education in, in government schools across the country. Some people are very, very upset about this. There are things in that bill which people have a problem with. They say you're not letting children be children, sex education at too young an age, 
They're basically indoctrinating these kids with all kinds of LGBTQIA plus stuff, which your party has a quite hard line ag against. And I I'd like you to explain that, you know, so that people understand your position. Um, Gareth, firstly, we have to agree that uh, education should be the responsibility of the parents. Mm -hmm. Parents cannot be left out of the equation by people who don't have children. All right? It is a difficult thing to see somebody who does not have children and who has children or has children who are dropouts, who are drug addicts, because they could not control their children. They could not raise, they raise their children properly. Saying to you, your child must do one, two, three. Now, or we will decide what's going to happen to your children. Now, we argue against that. We say before there was a teacher, there was a parent. And the parent knows what is best for their child. So parent organizations, parents uh, and who perform part of the school board on running of the schools must have a voice. Now, the Bella Bill, unfortunately, is giving the minister all the powers to make all the decisions. And we don't agree with that. Parents must be part of decision making. They must be consulted along the way. And secondly, a school, we believe, has to be an extension of the home. A school should not be contrary to what the home is doing. If the home raises a child that will be responsible, we believe that the school should also be part of that should be part of that. Don't undermine the parents at home, but work with the parents. And this will only be possible if parents are given space and parents are allowed to say something. Now, coming to sex education, I can assure you, many, most of the South African children know about sex than they know about mathematics. And we find this very unfortunate. Uh, many of the teachers or lecturers African lecturers in South African schools, the majority of them come from Zimbabwe, okay? Some of the best teacher lecturers in our universities are Zimbabweans. Why is Zimbabwe focused on educating and producing the best students? Now, you have people, obviously, sometimes who are saying these foreigners must go, these foreigners must go without making a distinction between illegal foreigners and those who are in the country legally, those whose skills South Africa needs. If all our foreigners uh, who are in, in, in universities, lecturers, can leave, our education is going to collapse. It is definitely going to collapse. So the focus, we believe, of, age, of lecturers and of students, of teachers, has to be on empowering children and giving them, making them to be uh, not only great thinkers, but to be only also people of moral standing, a past people who know right from wrong. And not to say children must just decide on their own. So we believe as the ACDP that you cannot focus more on sex when it comes to children. When right. Zimbabwe and other countries are benefiting their children by teaching them mathematics and looking at what are the international trends, how is Singapore, for example, ensuring that their children are upright, their children, when they know when to start, when to leave, they know that if I have to start my job at eight o'clock, I arrive 15 minutes early. In some countries, when you are the time to start to start your job, is not uh, five minutes after eight o'clock. Then you start switching on your computer, waiting for the. No, 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 no. We believe when there is proper education and discipline, children and people will know. I have to give my best. I have to give my best energy in everything we do, and not how much can I take out of the system. Unfortunately, this is much. Would, of would it be fair to say that your party, the ACDP, is is the party for people who have belief in traditional values? You know, um, some ideas that have become quite unfashionable in some parts of society today. You know, idea that. You know, the, the, the man is the head of the household, that uh, religion should, uh, should be part of, of 
instruction that you should be moral and 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 have integrity in everything that you do. I mean, these don't sound like bad ideas to any of us, but for many people, they sound outdated. For some people, yeah. they like the idea that people must uh, must be changing their opinion about everything every fifteen minutes because the world has changed, and there are many people who've discarded so much of this. Do you think your party is the party for those people who are more traditional about these things? Well, I'm one of those men who doesn't want to share his wife with another man. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> you have one of such men. Okay. Fair <laughs> enough. I mean, that's a, that's a basic. I feel I feel like that's a first step to uh, you know uh, people agreeing on things. Yeah, I don't think that's unreasonable. <laughs> no, I'm I like wouldn't like to share my lover with another woman either. <laughs> yeah. Right. So, Pumi, you have that in common with the Reverend Kenneth Mesh. <laughs> But the question is, where do we get this from? This is part of um, our bringing up. And this, for me, is part of the influence I got from believing in God, that if you are a man and you are a husband, be faithful to your wife, and the wife must be faithful to the husband. So then people are saying, no, that's all the tradition. We need to exchange one day with this woman, and the next day, I don't agree with that, and I will never agree with that. All right? So the ACDP believes, and I personally also believe, that uh, we have to wait. We should not throw the baby with the bathwater. What works? And what will make us a better society? Now, South Africans can say, let people do anything they want to do. But when you compare whether the stability in the country, the safety in the country, you compare them to other African countries, we are, la we are lagging behind. So I am, I, I am of the opinion personally that there are many things within our cultures that must be preserved. Because if you're going to throw everything out of the window in the name of times have changed, you will end up not having anything you believe. So there must be things you believe, things you hold on to. And uh, one of the things I also like to say is that people must be strong enough not to be easily influenced, okay? A dead fish will always follow a stream. If the stream goes to the east, a dead fish will go to the east. But when you have a living fish, even though the stream goes to the east, it will go to the west. Why? Because a dead fish is alive. And I am like that. I want to stand for my convictions. I want to stand for what I believe. Now, one of the criticisms against our president, Ramaphosa, mm -hmm. is that he does not have a, a strong moral backbone. Okay. Mm. Or any backbone. backbone. Some people say some people say he has no backbone at all. Correct. Correct. Okay. Okay. He fits well into the group of people who are like dead fish. They look at which stream the water is flowing and they want to flow that way. So I believe every man should be a man of his values, a man of his convictions. And uh, unfortunately, I can't say my wife now because I lost my wife last year or after 46 years. Now, my wife knew that I can trust my husband. And I knew that I could trust my wife. I would spend time in parliament in Cape Town. My wife would be in Josie. You know, it did not happen. But imagine somebody would call me. Hey, Rev, you are in Cape Town. You are in parliament. Your wife is at Sun City with another guy. Somebody that has more money like you. You think I would worry about that? Not at all. Why? Because I trusted her. You know, so to have a good, strong, long lasting relationship, trust has to be there. And for trust to be there, you need to be a person of good, uh, strong morals and also a good, strong backbone. Because if my friends are playing around with girls mm -hmm. and with women and I have convictions, I will not do what my friends are doing. So it is important that South Africa be led by men and women of convictions, not men and women who have no backbone because we see their fruits there of today, men and women of strong backbones. Oh, well, look, I think there, there's no denying that you, that you have the convictions that you have, but we, where, where then and how do you reconcile that with the constitution? That that is the backbone of our country, right? Where where and where, where do you reconcile those two things? Where there are differences, because for a lot of people who might be listening to you now, that there might be places where the two don't meet. And how how do you then say to South Africans at large who you want to come and vote for you, 
How do you say you reconcile those two things? You know, when there is respect, it is easy and possible to reconcile those two. All right. Um, a few years ago, I was on a program, I think it was Radio 702, and the question was asked whether we only want Christians to vote for us. And because it was a phone-in program, one of the callers said, I am a Muslim, and yet I'm voting for the ACDP because mm. of their values. Now, one of the strong values that South Africa does not have and you see what's happening in parliament with all the shouting, the booing, and all that remorse. You know, it's people have lost respect. Now, if Pumi, I may disagree with you, but if I respect you and I show my disagreement with you respectfully, we'll remain friends. Okay? There are people who said ACDP obviously does not agree with the LGBTQ plus uh, agenda. Obviously, we don't, but we respect them. Okay, in other countries, you hear about how they are being persecuted and doing all these things. Why? Because people don't like them. You'd be surprised. And actually, had I known we were going to talk about this, I would have won a, a top that was made by a man who's gay. Okay, I do not only have friends, but my best tailor is gay. Okay, we don't agree, but I respect him and he respects me. We respect each other's uh, opinions. So if South Africans can come to a stage where they respect each other, it would be easy for people to reconcile uh, things as, as Pumi has been asking. Respect is what is lacking so, respect one another. There's someone in the comments, um, who, who Congo Chris, he says, he thinks that if the ACDP took power in this country, I mean, that would be, you'd be thrilled if that was the case, uh, Reverend Meshwe. But if the ACDP did become the majority party, would you turn in South Africa into a theocracy? He, that's his concern. Definitely not. Definitely not. Um, <laughs> okay. Now, when I look at the life of Jesus and I listen to his teachings, uh -huh. Jesus believed in choice a popular scripture in the bible that most people know if you don't mind i will say it shortly okay he said uh, for god so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son so that whoever believes in him whoever all right he gives people a choice you have a choice to believe in him or a choice not to believe in him so because the one that we believe in we believe in, believed in choice. Freedom of choice will always be part of the ACDP. Now, remember, if I take you back to 2020, okay, uh, hard lockdown, there was a time when the president said, we will not force anybody to take the vaccine. And after a few weeks, the president somersaulted and he started mm -hmm. talking about mandatory vaccines. In parliament, I challenged the president. I said, Mr. President, you know that God who loves everybody does not force any everybody to be saved or to toe the line. He doesn't force. He gives us a choice. So I said, if God gives us a choice, government must also give people a choice. All right, let them know the consequences of their choices. That is good. But don't force people to do what they don't want to do. Give them choices. So ACDP believes in choices, the right to choose. I, I, I promoted that in parliament, and that's the position of the ACDP. We believe in the right to choose. Well, I, I saw a comment here that I thought was interesting from Slippery Pickle, uh, Reverend Meshwe. He says, this is the only man who made a decision to lock down the country and then apologized for his part in it, if for no other reason that makes him better than the rest. <laughs> so I also think that that's a, very, that's a very interesting observation. You know, you did. You said lockdowns did enormous harm. You apologized for your part in it. The rest of them were still waiting for their apologies. Well, <laughs> well true. Even though, even though we did not say we must have lockdown, we, all, we questioned that. We questioned yeah. that. Right? We question that because it is not fair 
to be told that you cannot visit your family that is in another province. And that's what mm -hmm. happened. We were not allowed to do that. Innocent people were arrested for jogging at the beach, walking their dogs at the beach. They were arrested. Police who should be closing the borders and making sure that criminals don't come in, they were now tracing and following their own citizens. I mean, that was a bad period that we must ensure will never be allowed to, 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 yeah. to recare in South Africa. We must, review. we must refuse to allow another lockdown that caused people their jobs, that caused people their assets, people lost cars, people lost, lost houses, and we don't want to go there again. People must be given a choice. That there was, you know, speaking of choices, by all indications, when South Africans go to the polls later, later this year, on the 29th of May, of May actually, mm -hmm. um, by all indications, there are going to be coalitions in place because of the number of people that, you know, the polls are telling us the way people are voting. Mm -hmm. When you think about the coalitions, are there any parties that you expressly will not work with or are you open to working with all parties? Mm. Well, if you talk about expressly not work with, the first one is the ANC. Bad company corrupts good morals. All right? <laughs> now, they, they are known... The ANC is known that they have thieves, they have looters among them, and they don't do anything about them. I think the ANC allowed so many, so much money to be stolen and looted that from what they have, we can, we can uh, eradicate much, much of the debt that South Africa has. So ANC definitely is a big no-no. And secondly, the EFF also is a big no-no. Do you know what happened at the Egrini Council this past week? Yes. <laughs> I mean, that was days the, now. Wherever you see, wherever you see any council or any legislature uh, having infights, having members of parliament or councillors throwing uh, th uh, bottles of water and chairs. The EFF is there, all right? <laughs> now, they have no respect. They have no respect. And because we are teaching and promoting respect, we unfortunately will not want to work with them. And as I said earlier, bad company corrupts good morals. I have one more question, Dr. Mishra. You were... Just one and then what? Yeah, yeah just then one we're done more. For me, is that I, it? I, I think just one more question. Oh, look, it may, <laughs> it may lead to, to more questions, but this... This is something that I, I think, um, as we look at our political landscape, one of the things, and you spoke about the consistency of the ACDP over the, of the, over the past number of years. Mm. You have been at the head of this organization since its inception. You were the inaugural president of the ACDP and have been in parliament representing the ACDP all these years. When is change coming to the leadership of the ACDP? Are you still the right person to lead this organization going into the future? Even Moses didn't make it into the promised land. <laughs> I think the best people to answer your question are the voters themselves and members of the ACDP. Let me tell you what happened. The ACDP has uh, elective conferences every two to three years, elective conferences. And everybody is allowed, and every branch is allowed to nominate a person for whatever position, including the president. People must, must vote for that. Now, what some people have said, because your question to me is a very popular question. I get it all the time. Are you a lifetime president? Are you, a, you want to do what Robert Mugabe did? I said, no. When you listen to, or you, you consider what we said in the beginning, when we started the ACDP, I said, I have a vision. And that vision is to um, have a godly leadership that will uh, promote godly governance so that there will not be any cheating there will not be any stealing, any looting, and there will not be corruption in government. So 
I promoted godly leadership. When you listen to all the parties over the years, none of them speaks about godly leadership. Okay, none of them. So our members have said, we believe in godly leadership that we are told will translate into a peaceful and prosperous nation. So people want to see that. So when time comes for them to elect, they say, no, 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 no. This man has not yet finished his job because we don't have a godly leadership in parliament. We don't have a, a government that is promoting peaceful coexistence. All right. I suffered under apartheid, but I don't major on apartheid. OK, that because when I drive in the car, I don't spend too much time on the rear view mirror looking at what's happening behind me. I look to the front. And any one of us who always looks into the rear view mirror and you don't look forward where you're going to, you're going to crash. You're going to have an accident. So my advice is, even though we can learn from the past, that should not be our major concern. Our major concern should be to build a good, successful, peaceful, and prosperous future that will be good for our children. And uh, But the, the flip side of of what you're saying to me is that your organization does not have a succession plan. They cannot see anybody else in the leadership of this organization. There are no new ideas. There are no new leaders coming in. And, and so you, you, have, you have not built a, a leadership pipeline. And I mean, even in management books tell us, right, that an organization is in danger if the leader of that organization could get hit by a bus mm -hmm. and then there's nobody to replace them. In 30 years, you have not been able to groom more leaders into this organization. That is worrying for me. We, for me, we, we, we have great leaders, okay? Now, when leaders are saying, I still want to choose this man, and I said to the people, I want to serve South Africa, and they say, no, this man has served us well. Let's give him another chance. Just like that, maybe after 30 years, it will change. As people have said, that parties, liberation parties, change every 30 years. Maybe because this is the 30th year, people, people will say, hi, now let's try somebody else. It might happen because this is the 30th year. But the truth is, and the fact is, people have said, we still believe there is much we can get out of this man. Let us continue with him. That's what they have said. They have the right to choose anytime, anybody. We have leaders. That I'm yes, saying. Pumi. We yes, Pumi. Yes, stop, Pumi. Stop telling the, the ACDP what to do, Pumi. They can choose their own leader. All right. How dare you? Really? Yeah. <laughs> you, know, you, you know, the 30-year the, the, the 30 mark, you know, is, is also because of a generation, right? Is mm -hmm. You now have a generation yeah. of people yeah. Who, yeah. who do not have the same sympathies as the older leadership. It's it's also, I mean, it's sad to think of it this way, but it, it actually is. Even if you look at, if we use the Bible analogy, right? The children of Israel coming out of Egypt, 40 years, because the old people have to die out mm -hmm. in order to be able to move into a future without the sympathies of the past. And that's what the 30 year mark is about. It's a new generation of people who don't have those sympathies. Who all what we Can, have here in South Africa is we have lots of young people who all they have known over the past 30 years of their life is the ineptitude of the government in power and not necessarily how bad the old government was. So, Reverend, I want to ask you about the practical stuff. So how important are these small parties? Because you, the Freedom Front Plus, I mean, Patrick says here in the comments, you guys are not looking to run the country but giving a voice for issues and other parties that, 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 that they don't go on about. Uh, critical for democracy, you're both in the moonshot, anywhere that, that multi-party charter, how important is that to you? Well, a multi-party charter is important to me because you have um, leaders who look into the future and say, if after the elections we would need to work together as a coalition, what are going to be the guidelines? What are going to be the rules, all right? How are we going to work? When we disagree, how are we going to resolve our differences? And obviously, ACDP is part of this multi-party charter, working, mm -hmm. uh, building, and creating a framework for the future. We did not support the Moonshot Pact because the Moonshot Pact, as I've said many times, had a headmaster, and we were all like schoolboys who hear him from the headmaster, all right? But now, 
<laughs> the, the playing field is level. We are all talking together as leaders who are concerned and um, leading different agendas and programs. There is an alternation of leaders. It's not one person dictating terms. It's not one person leading, but it's different persons within this multi-party charter who are given opportunities to lead, opportunities to do one, two, three. But this working together is so good that I believe when the time comes to form a coalition uh, by the opposition parties, we will have good material from to choose from and we will be having good foundational principles and policies that will ensure that this multi-party charter will definitely work. Okay, well, I mean, we've been we've been talking a lot about kind of the the, the rest of the, the the political landscape, and we've spoken to a lot of leaders over the last few weeks. Um, there are parties that you said you won't join up with, you won't work with the ANC. How strong a role do you think the new MK party are going to play in the future of KZN and also of the country? And what do you make of of uh, former President Jacob Zuma's support for them? Well, MK Party, I think, um, is helping to reduce the ANC to size, cut the ANC to size. That is a positive. Mm -hmm. What I don't appreciate with the MK Party is their threats. Um, for anybody, as the MK Party has done, anybody to say, if we do not get a two-thirds majority, there will be chaos in the country that the ACDP does not approve, does not agree with. And if an opportunity arises for me to meet with the leadership of the MK party, I would prevail on them. Please mind your language. We do not want people to prepare themselves for the worst, to prepare themselves for violence. Now, if they can mind their language and they stop saying there will be chaos in the country, we don't need chaos. We need to rebuild South Africa. We must rebuild this country. Fighting destroys countries. We see what Sudan is like. We see a number of countries on the African continent that have not developed. Why? Because they have been fighting, 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 fighting all the time. It is time, I believe, to build the new South Africa, to build this South Africa we love and appreciate our only home. It's South Africa, a country that I believe is one of the best, if not the best in the world. People who travel, including myself, you go overseas, go to Australia, go to America. And when I come back, I'm marvel. I say, hey, we have a beautiful country. We have a wonderful country. So political parties should work towards building this beautiful country we have so that what many tourists have been saying over the years, will continue, will not be lost. And what have tourists been saying about South Africa? Many of them are saying, South Africans are wonderful people. They are very mm -hmm. nice people. We so, appreciate the way we are received in South Africa. This is the South Africa we want to build, not a South Africa of fighters fighting all the time, even over small things. So, so uh, just to, to Pumi's question earlier about how you've led the ACDP for 30 years. I mean, Matthew says Mark Zuckerberg is still the leader of Facebook. So, I mean, it's not a problem. Um, and then Carl wants Facebook us to ask you. Facebook is hardly a teenager. Carl, Carl thinks I've been very soft on you. Um, are you a socialist or a capitalist, a free marketer or a communist? A real question he once asked. <laughs> Calm down, Carl. What do you say to that, <laughs> Reverend Meshwe? Are you When it comes to economic policy? Well, we are definitely free marketers, okay? okay. We, yeah, we are definitely unapologetically free marketers. Yeah. We believe that um, free marketers should also have a conscience, okay? A social conscience. We believe we have a responsibility not to close our eyes to the suffering, but we are definitely free marketers. You cannot be able to give anything you don't have. Now, the socialists, unfortunately, they want to consume everything and afterwards they have nothing to share anymore. But free marketers, we say, no, <laughs> let everybody work hard let everybody be productive so that we'll be able, we'll have enough to share with others. And then Congo Chris also getting very fiery in the comments here. What does the ACDP propose to do to address rising levels of Christian nationalism? Do you think Christian nationalism is a problem in South Africa? Or is this just something that we hear in American, um, you know, in the American left when they're too worried think, about local and, yeah. and national terrorism? 
it is something we hear in America and other places, not in South Africa. South African Christians have been very uh, understanding, in some cases even tolerant. And as I say, we have people we disagree with, and I have people I disagree with who are my friends. Mm -hmm. And I don't want that to change. I want people who disagree with me to be my friends and people I disagree with to also continue to be my friend. So uh, Christian nationalism, I don't see the rise of it in South Africa. Not yet. I don't see it. Thank you. All right. Well, um, you know what, Reverend, people may say that we've given you a bit of an easy ride here today. But for those people what in South mean, Africa, Gareth? no, what I do don't. You mean an easy ride? Well, you know, I don't have any, I really don't have uh, any issues with any of the things that you've said. I've got to be honest with you. And I'm, I'm not a, a religious person. I'm not a Christian I, person. But, but as far as I'm concerned, like for those people who are looking for someone who's not interested in just conflict and noise and mm -hmm. blowhard statements about ideology, I think you're an attractive candidate to those people. And I think that there are a lot of people who also can look at your track record and go, well, there's 30 years of this guy saying what he thinks, doing what he says. I don't, say, I don't suppose there's too much I can, I can take issue with there. I mean, I, I would say if there was, uh, and, and you and I have had disagreements about minor things over the years, but honestly, it's not worth bringing them up. <laughs> Look, and, the, and, and again, you know, the, the thing about a, an election year like we have now is all the parties have an opportunity to put out what their policies are, to re refresh yeah, hit the refresh button, and I saw a couple of days ago that um, I think News Twenty Four are launching a, a, a which I'm gonna love playing around with is they're actually launching a manifesto um, che check sheet right that puts up all of the various parties mm. next to each other. It's an interactive form that you can look in, you know, so you can go and put in policy what economic policy and it will tell you what the different parties next to each other what their economic policies look like and what they're right. looking at and i i think i mean those things unfortunately not a lot of people read through all of this only stuff, you for me only you no but it's it's important and it's important particularly when there are so many people on the ballot and i think we're gonna have the biggest ballot that we've ever had mm -hmm. and it's important to to be aware of what the things that you agree with and the things that you don't agree with with different parties and who you give your vote to this year so is going to be every year it is important every time there's an election who you give your vote to is important but it i think this year more than ever individuals need to be sure that who they give their vote to is somebody that corresponds with what they believe in. So that some of the temperature, some of the, the heat that we see and the frustration is alleviated by that. Which, which provinces are your best provinces in the ACDP? Gareth, in case I forget, allow me to say one of the sure. main reasons why I, I, am, I admire you as a man, is that um, you are level-headed, even though you are not a religious person, you are tolerant. And I appreciate the fact that Sometimes. you did not come with your hammers <laughs> and the other guys. Yeah? The hammers and the other guys that said, I'm going to nail this guy. You just say, I want to know what well, this guy has to And I like well, that and I appreciate that. That has listen, been you. You are an original. Thank you. Thank you, Reverend. But you know what? It's it's Pumi's point as well. We were talking about this earlier. We we don't bring people on the show to interrogate and tear them to pieces. <laughs> as much as that would make for great ratings, and there are people who are bloodthirsty who want to hear that kind of thing. I think it's just about hearing the ideas. Um, where is where is the ACDP center of power? Where do you guys do the best when it comes to the country? Well, three provinces, uh, Gareth. Uh, Gauteng, uh, Western Cape, and uh, KZN. That's where okay. we have been doing best. And also Limpopo is on the hills. Yeah, mainly this. All right. Yeah. And, and are there any wards and municipalities where you guys have a significant amount of control that you're looking to up that this, this coming election? Not, not really. Not really. If you talk about municipalities that we control, we don't control any municipality. 
We have uh, councillors in different municipalities who are in different councils. Um, we had uh, some in Gauteng who were MMC, who had MMC positions when there was still better stability in the councils. Now we have remorse in councils. But um, one of the most important things that um, it has been the reason why we did not participate in by-elections, for example, because uh, that question has is being asked time and again. ACDP does not have a funder or a sponsor because we are paying a high price for our convictions, all right? Now, mm -hmm. I said to you guys, we cannot be bought with money because when people give you lots of money, obviously they want something, a piece of the cake, okay? I'm giving you this money, but I expect you to promote this agenda. We don't want to do that because we don't want to, prom to, to go against the mandate that our voters have given us. So because of these convictions and people say, no, he still holds on to this old old-fashioned traditional values. No, we are not going to support him. Fine, that's the price we are paying. But I'm showing South Africans and the ACB showing South Africans. Whether we are given the opportunity to govern or not, we are people of conviction. We believe if people follow our values, if the country embraces what the ACP is saying, we are going to produce children. We will produce children who will not attack and rape their own parents. Children who will respect their parents, who will love their children, which is something we want to see, to see a country where children are children and where adults are adults, where respect. Talking about the respect, I respect my children. I respect my children. Somebody once challenged me. When they had me call my son, say, okay? Refer to him as say, my son, my own son, okay? Let's say, why? I say, I'm teaching my son respect. And then you have some ladies, uh, my children who say to them, madam. And they say, hey, I'm not a madam. You make me old. I say, no, you are old already. If you're old or you're old, <laughs> madam is not going to make you younger or, or older. But that is one way of saying to people in society. We must respect each other. We must respect elderly people. So that is the ACDP and um, there will come a time when people are saying about, we have tried everything. We have tried how everything. A, how about a prison just for, for corrupt politicians? That, that would be a nice thing to see in the manifesto. 100%. I agree with you. 100%. Okay, Let's put great. them in jail. <laughs> there, I'm, now I'm with you. Now I'm starting to feel. I, I, okay, so I do have... A, Exactly one more question. Go ahead, Pumchi. Rev. You did say that you 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 foresee that you're going to gain from all the disillusionment that people have with all the parties that that have not been representing them well. So if you were to make a prediction, how much do you think the ACDP is going to grow in the next election? Mm. Are you going to increase the number of seats that you've got in parliament? And if so, by how much? Hey, now, now that, that's a difficult one for how much, okay? That's a difficult one. But <clears throat> I can talk about my wish that we will definitely more than treble. We, I would be upset. <laughs> and I'll come for, to you for comfort. Pumi and Gareth, I'll come to you for comfort. <laughs> If I am, I, I'm so upset. Oh, but you have the greatest comforter. You don't need us. <laughs> yes. What a friend we have in Jesus. Oh, you have a greater comforter than us. <laughs> if, no, if, if, what? if what? If what? Great. Okay. If I get anything less than 20, and I would be very upset. Mm. I would be upset. Mm. And I, I'm serious. And obviously, mm. if I get more than 2,000, we are going to celebrate together. I don't like cake, but I'll bring cake that Gareth and Pumi who gave me this opportunity. Where are you? I love cake. Where are you? Where are you campaigning? Uh, are you are you going to be all over the country? No, I'm going to be all over the country. I'm expected all over, and I must appear all over. So I'll definitely be all over the country. All right. Well, we wish you luck, uh, Reverend Kenneth Meshwe. It's it's great to talk to you. I know we haven't spoken to you in some time. Let's not let it be so long until the next time we talk. I and agree. Best of luck. I mean, we say to good every, luck. everybody, good luck. Uh, we, we hope that uh, that many people turn out for this election. Many more have registered. We've got the highest registrations we've ever had in South Africa for an election. So things are looking competitive. 
And I think there are there are lots of uh, issues on the table. People have a lot at stake. We'll be watching when those uh, we will be watching when the results come out. I hope you get your twenty seats. And I hope you vote for for ACDP also. Let me let me just throw this. Lastly, I we need votes from everybody, including the journalists who are interrogating us, the journalists who are giving us a hard time. We also <laughs> expect them after evaluating everybody will say evaluating this PTP. Evaluating this PTP. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you very much, Reverend. Have an excellent day and a good week. Thank you very much, Gareth, and thank you very much, Pumi. It was great spending this hour with you. It was wonderful having you on. So if the Reverend gets his 20 seats, the one thing that we can be sure of is is a lot more respect and collegiality. Yes. In that. Which uh, would be nice, actually, considering what we saw in the Eastern Cape last week with the EFF and Etequini and Ekuruleni. So if the Reverend gets his 20 seats, Mm -hmm. uh, we can expect a whole lot more grown-ups, I hope, like the Ref. Yeah, if you stop being ageist. I saw I saw our friend Soli Mueng who joined in the conversation. He said the obsession with age is bad. But Soli, it's also because we're getting older. Uh, Mandela was a great leader at 72 to 74. Compare him with a relatively young Malema. If age were the only criterion, people would go for him at great cost to South Africa. Age is is it's actually not an obsession with age. Okay. It really is an obsession with ideas and the longevity of those ideas. I think I, I think we really, really could benefit. And and bright ideas, new ideas, refreshing ideas are not the preserve of the young. No, mm. they're not. But for people who've been in a position for 30 years, maybe it's time to accept that that your level of efficacy may not be at its best. We'll leave it at that, Pums. Some hard criticism. And uh, Congo Chris agrees with you. He said uh, we could have gone with more tough questions like the one about succession. Well, you asked it. So I, don't, I don't know what you want, Congo Chris. <laughs> what do you want us to do? To feed your baby? All right. Thanks, everybody. That's all the time we've got for today. We will. I said to feed your baby. Congo Chris, take that to the uh, the shops. I'm not looking for your vote. I could care less. I will see you tomorrow morning at 6 a.m. Cheers, everybody. Bye-bye. Thank <laughs> you.